Walker. So we're calling a meeting to order, and it is 6.31 on uh, Monday, September the 28th. And this is the October, Monday, October the 28th, my gosh. Yes. And so this is the October meeting for the uh, Township Council of the Township of Edwardsburg Cardinal. And uh, the next item on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Deputy Mayor Deschamps, might you have that motion? Self. There's no changes to it? Uh, I don't think so. Good. Good. So moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter, that Municipal Council approves the agenda as presented. Thank you very much. You've heard the motion. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is carried. Thank you. And the next item on the agenda is disclosure of pecuniary interest. Uh, does anyone have a disclosure here this evening? And if so, what is the general nature? None by me. None by me. No, no disclosures. And so item number four on the agenda is delegations and presentations. We have none this evening. Item number five, minutes of the previous council meetings. That's the minutes of the meeting held on September the 28th. Councillor Hunter. I shall second by Deputy Mayor Deschamps that the Municipal Council receives and approves the minutes of the regular meeting date of September 28, 2020. Okay, uh, are there um, any errors or omissions to point out? Hearing none, I'm about to call a question. We'll deal with business arising at the next item of the agenda. So, those in favor? Aye. The motion is carried. Thank you. And so now, I'll deal with business arising from that council meeting. Item number six on the agenda. Does anyone have anything to bring forward? Apparently not. So I'm moving then to item number seven on the agenda, and that's the approval of various committee meetings minutes uh, that were held during the month. The first is the Public Library Board, Councillor Cameron. Yes, thank you. It's moved by myself and seconded by Deputy Mayor. Uh, Deschamps, uh, the Municipal Council, receives the minutes of the Public Library Board meeting dated August 25th, 2020. Thank you very much. And we're receiving these minutes. I think the group approves their own minutes. Yes. Uh, so, uh, the motion is on the floor. Are there any questions? No questions. I vote to call the question. Those in favor? Aye. The motion is carried. Thank you. Kind of a, a long package because there are a number of reports in there. So, looks like they've been pretty active. Well, and a lot of it, uh, Mr. Mayor, is the new procedures on COVID. Right, it is. And I'm glad to see that the board is putting full procedures in place. Uh, number 7B on the agenda is the Port Management Committee of September the 16th, Councilman Dillabaugh. Moved by myself and seconded by Council Cameron that this Valley Council receives the minutes of the Port Management Committee meeting dated September 16th, 2020. Okay, in this case, we received the minutes. The Port approves their own minutes. Uh, are there any questions with regard to these minutes? Hearing none, vote to call the question. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Thank you. And moving then to the Community Development Committee of October the 5th, Deputy Mayor Dacian. Myself, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter, the Municipal Council receives and approves the minutes of the Community Development Committee meeting dated October 5th, 2020. Okay, thank you very much. Now, questions if any? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Thank you. Then uh, 7D on the agenda, Committee of the Whole Administration and Finance for October the 13th. Councillor Hunter. Move myself and my Deputy Mayor Deschamps. The Municipal Council receives and approves the minutes of the Committee of the Whole Administration and Finance meeting dated August for October 13th, 2020. Sir. Thank you very much. Questions, discussion? Just a quick question. Yes, go ahead. It's really on part of it. The former control, has there been any word on Mr. Courtney or his, his 
certificate and status or anything? Yes, he checked in and uh, he's not doing any cormorant hunting. Uh, I think he's trying to stay away from the St. Lawrence River right now. While the others are involved, he doesn't want to get his work um, mixed up with a with the, what's basically a, an open season right now. Mm -hmm. So he's uh, sort of standing in the background. Any other questions? Hearing none, we're about to call the question on the minutes. Those in favor? Motion is carried. And then uh, 7E is the public meeting concerning the recent <coughs> of 1019 Hyman Road, Deputy Mayor Dacia. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter, that Municipal Council receives the minutes of the public meeting, 1019 Hyman Road, Pinfold, dated October 19th, 2020. Thank you very much. And uh, questions, if any? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Thank you. No, that's close here. This goes here. And then last, 7F, is the Committee of the Whole Public Works Environmental Services of October 19th. Councillor uh, Cameron. Yes, thank you. It's moved by myself and seconded by Deputy Mayor Deschamps that Municipal Council receives and approves the minutes of the Committee of the Whole, Public Works, Environmental Services, and Facilities meeting dated October 19th, 2020. All right, questions, if any, discussion, if any, Councillor Hunter. Have we heard any more about the ATM machine at the bank? Dealing with that today, as of uh, noon today, no resolution of the issue, uh, but speaking to the buyer of the property about uh, 10.30 this morning, he's optimistic that there will be something in writing, uh, an agreement in writing, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, this week. So, I'm not- They're run a breakdown to the last minute, are they? Well, I don't want to say anything more. Um, I just want to let the process work. Uh, but there's a fair amount of interest in what's happening and why it's happening. Okay, any other questions with those minutes? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Motion minutes are approved. And now I think I'm on item eight on the agenda which is the various action and information items that are coming forward as recommendations from those committees. And the first is a, a an application for 2140 Dundas Street, uh, Deputy <coughs> Mayor Dacia. Yes, that's me. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter, that Municipal Council proceed with scheduling a public meeting for a zoning bylaw amendment at 2140 Dundas Street as recommended by the Community Development Committee. Okay, thank you very much. And if I recall correctly, their date has been chosen uh, and it's in the, the CAO's report. Maybe, uh, can you just remind me what that date is? Uh, certainly, Mr. Mayor, it should be uh, November 16th and this particular one would be at 5.30. November 16th, 2020, 5.30 p.m. Yes. Okay, now that's not part of the motion, uh, but I'm going to call the question on the motion without that in there. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. All right, and 8B is an application uh, for rezoning at 1026 County Road 2. And again, council is setting a public meeting. Uh, Deputy, or, uh, excuse me, Councillor uh, Dillabaugh. Uh, moved by myself, second by Council Cameron, that Miss Pally Council proceed to schedule a public meeting for zoning bylaw amended at 1026 County Road 2, as recommended by the Community Development Committee. Okay, and again, back to the CAO. I think that is that the same date, November the 16th. Uh, it is November 16th, and uh, that would be at 6 p.m. 
again, uh, the time is not embedded in the motion, but I'm just going to make a note on the motion and slip. Uh, I have a mover and a seconder, the council set, uh, uh, is only uh, schedule a meeting. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is carried. Right now on 8C on the agenda, which is the zoning bylaw amendment process, Deputy Mayor Dacia. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter, that Municipal Council delegate the authority to schedule a public meeting under the Planning Act to the Community Development Committee as recommended by the Community Development Committee. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, discussion, if any? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Okay. So I would just suggest that when that when the, when the committee does its business and sets its it sets the dates that the dates be reflected in the minutes. Uh, just a suggestion. And uh, now I'm going to 8D on the agenda, which is the cardinal boat ramp repair. And uh, I think I'll let the motion come forward, uh, Councillor Hunter. Myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Deschamps, that the Municipal Council 1 direct staff to proceed with the purchase and installation of six concrete slabs from the Moose Creek cement in the amount of $7,230 plus non rebate HST, and two, approve the additional cost of gravel to be used after removing the current cement in place of the Cardinal Boat Ramp with an upset limit of $8,000, excluding non-rebated HST, as recommended by the Committee of the Whole Public Works, Environmental Services and Facilities. Okay, thank you very much. The motion is on the floor. Speakers to the motion. Okay, nobody's going to speak to the motion. Uh, I'm going to speak against the motion, and again, and sorry gentlemen, I'm not going to be able to be with you on this one. Uh, I would actually uh, encourage a motion to defer this and send it back to staff for further study. Uh, however, if it's the will of the committee, uh, the council that it go forward, so be it. Uh, but I am going to call for a recorded vote, and uh, I'll, and I will call the question if that's the way it's going to be. So, Councillor Cameron, how do you vote? That would be yay. Councillor Dillabaugh? Yay. Uh, Councillor Hunter? Yay. Deputy Mayor? Yay. And I'll vote against it. Okay, motion is carried. Thank you. And I'm at item number 8E on the agenda, which is a an amendment to the 2020 tax rate bylaw. And I think that's Councillor Hunter. Move myself, second by Deputy Mayor Deschamps, that Municipal Council approve the amendment schedule A of the 2020 tax rate bylaw and direct staff to amend the tax billing for the affected properties. Okay, so now, uh, just a question of, uh, uh, for the clerk. So we're passing a motion to amend a tax rate bylaw. Does that not require a bylaw to amend the bylaw? So through the chair, this is just a recommendation to council that we amend it. I have it as um, 11F to actually amend the tax oh, rate bylaw. Oh, okay, sorry, yeah, I call that now. All right, those in favor? Motion is carried. Eight E, and so now eight F, which is twenty twenty vacation. Uh, Councillor Dilva. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself and seconded by Council Cameron that Mr. Pallet Council authorize for twenty twenty only the option for the, for an employee to carry forward additional five days of vacation into. 2021. Good discussion, if any. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, mention one thing. Uh, it, it, the way this is written, it's written in the singular. Uh, the option for an employee. That's the singular. Uh, clearly, the intent is for any employee. So it applies to all employees. So that's just a point of clarification. Um, I don't know how 
to do that without uh, changing the motion, so I'm not going to change the motion, but clearly the way it's written is it's in the singular. So, those in favor? Motion is carried. And so that concludes the various items coming forward. Uh, from committees, and now we're on item number nine, which is correspondence, and Councillor Cameron. Yes, uh, it's uh, moved by myself and seconded by Deputy Mayor Desham that Municipal Council receives the correspondence listings for the following dates as previously circulated, October 2nd, October 9th, October 19th, October 22nd, all 2020. Thank you very much. Discussion, if any? Anything bring yes. coming yes. forward? Yes, I do, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd like to refer to October 9th. There's a letter from uh, Mr. Mike Smith and a letter from Chris Marcellus and uh, through the chair to, uh, to the CAO. Have these uh, letters been... Um, um, uh, I'm looking for a word. Been analyzed and is there, is there going to be um, information brought forward at uh, future committee meetings? Uh, through, 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 through the mayor, um, not, not, not at this time. Okay, and one other uh, question, Mr. Mayor, just to, to clarify. The letter that's uh, marked from uh, Mr. Marcellus, um, have we got the full correspondence here in this package? Because the reason I'm asking that is nowhere in the correspondence from Mr. Marcellus is his name mentioned. So how did we know it was from him? I'd have, I, 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 would, I, I would have to review that correspondence package too. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll just leave that with you for So is for it future. just on the title page? There's nothing on the title page at all that uh, indicates it's who it's from. So how do we how do we know it's from him? Well, I I, I would be assuming that perhaps there's a um, there might have been an envelope with his name on it. Uh, I I just don't know, but it just doesn't mention his name here. Uh, what what uh, what package is that? What okay, date? it's the uh, October 9th. October 9th, twenty twenty. Yes. And uh, the pages aren't numbered, but it was received on October seventh. Mike Smith? No, uh, Chris Marcellus. I mean, I was at the meeting and I know because of the way the questions are that um, um, that it was who it was, but I'm just, I was just curious if we've got, if we've got the whole package, that's, that's, that's the thing. It's not signed by him. Or anything. Uh, okay, so what stage are we at here to the clerk? Uh, um, the, I'm sorry, go ahead. Through the chair, the council package is only just to receive it, so we don't include every single piece of correspondence to the public. We only cover just the cover page on here. You would have received the actual correspondence by email from our community development committee, sorry, our community development coordinator. I'm just actually pulling up my email to confirm. I believe the correspondence from Mr. Marcellus was through an email chain. So I'm just trying to find it. I can't recall what the package contained, so I'm at a bit of a loss here. Well, it's, it's I don't just, have it, my package. Yeah, it's, it's just that there's several questions that he's proposed uh, back to um, back to the committee, or I think it's back to the, yes, uh, my recommendations to the Community Development Committee, and he lists, there's four of them listed on the last two, or the last page, uh, from there. And I was just wondering if these were coming back to the committee or for future, further develop, uh, discussion. So the answer that we heard was no. Go ahead. 
Yes, so it's through the chair. Um, I'm just on the correspondence package. Um, we received that on October 7th. It was an email attachment. So our community development coordinator printed off the attachment and stamped it as received on October 7th. Okay, Cause it, so who was the email addressed to? Uh, I can't remember if it was myself or Wendy directly. We'd, I'd have to go back on the email chains. Okay, so the email was not addressed to Marin Council? No, because it was requested through the Community Development Committee uh, to send it to staff. And then he sent that and we said that we would include it for council reference. Okay, so it's been included in the Correct. package and that's that. Correct. Okay. All right, so I still have a motion on the floor, I think. You do? I do. Uh, moved by Can uh, Councillor Cameron, seconded by, is it uh, Deputy Mayor, is it uh, Councillor Dillabaugh? Uh, who's seconding here? I think it's uh, Deputy Mayor Deshaun. Okay, yeah. so those in favor of the motion? Aye. Motion is carried. Okay. And so then, that's the correspondence. And so then the next item on the agenda is item number 10, which is to approve municipal disbursements. And Deputy Mayor Deschamps, I think you have that motion. I do. Moved by myself, second by Councillor John Hunter, that Municipal Council approves the payment of municipal invoice, invoices circulated and dated as follows. Report dated October 2nd, 2020-104, $238,112.09. Report dated October 21st, 2020-107-184-539.15. Report dated October 22nd, 2020-108-474,719.23 for a total of 897,300 and three hundred and seventy dollars and forty seven cents very good very good questions if any hearing none I'm about to call the question those in favor aye motion is carried thank you and just before we go on I just want to recognize that we do have a lady joining us in the gallery and I don't know who that lady is but <laughs> we are welcome and um, just so you're uh, aware uh, the meeting has gone very quickly tonight because it's all uh, information that's come from committees and council is just basically uh, uh, approving things that have already come to council as, as a result of committee Sorry. study. So Sorry. the meeting is moving very quickly. And so I'm at item number 11 on the agenda. I could, Mr. Mayor, just before we leave the bills, we uh, got a bill from Greer Galloway for the Greenwich and Johnstown. I wonder if the CEO could uh, tell us when we're going to get a copy of that report. I assume it's a report that's come forward. So. Mr. CEO? Uh, sorry, could you, could, could you reference the, uh, the, the, the page number for that? Well, it's on page seven, 70 of it uh, under Greer Galloway billing for the month uh, they billed for the storm in Johnstown drainage. There's uh, two different bills. There, one's four thousand forty nine hundred and something, and the other's thirteen hundred and something. I wonder. I uh, assume that it's, they made a report of what the findings were for the drainage. For the for the for the, for the Johnstown drainage. Yeah. Uh, I'm not. I am not one hundred percent sure when that uh, when, when that report uh, is due, but I will. Uh, I'll follow up on. Uh, good question because in uh, many cases we do get uh, progress, uh, requests for progress payments along the way. Uh, I, I can recall a previous situation where council got progress payments every month for about six months and never did see the final report. I remember that well. Good question and uh, I know that the CAO will follow up and see when we can expect to see the report. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I just have uh, a couple questions. We got one in 68 of 101. Uh, it's 
Jackson Cove, uh, Cardinal Arena. Cardinal Arena repair is $6,300. Uh, just a minute now, you're on page 68 of 101. Yes. And what's the name of the supplier? Uh, Sinco Refrigeration. I don't even see that on I'm page on 68. 67 of 101, Sinco Refrigeration. 67 of 101. Yeah. All right at the bottom, yeah. and then the, the invoices that are up at the top of the next page. All right. And we've got Cardinal Arena Repair, $6,300. What, what is that? I know the, the wheel, 23730 that's our, our, our dehumidifier, I do believe. Uh, and uh, I thought that was included total, 23730 with Mr. Spencer of our public works meeting, but I see the Cardinal Arena condenser reseal. I think that's part of the 23000 so that really, if I'm not mistaken, that dehumidifier is over $30,000. Is that right or no? Uh, Mr. Through, Seal. Well, through, 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 through the mayor, that, yeah, the, the, these are pretty difficult to to to, to answer at this at this particular. We'll, we'll, we'll certainly follow up on on, yeah, on just, those on, on those questions. At least the Cardinal Arena repairs. What repairs were there, if you don't mind, uh, Mr. Seal? I know when uh, I know I find it difficult uh, during the day to sometimes get to the CAO. With, when I have these kind of questions, but it makes it a lot easier for him if the questions come prior to the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I'm sorry, and I, I just got that late, late, late. Okay, okay we'll, follow, um, we'll follow up on that. Thank you. All right, so I think, uh, if I recall correctly, that I have called the question uh, to approve the disbursement sheets. That motion has been carried, mm -hmm. and so um, now I'm moving on, and if I recall correctly, I should now be into the bylaws, uh, which is item number 11 on the agenda. <coughs> 11 on the agenda, and so I'm at 11A, which is a bylaw regarding meeting recording policy, and um, Deputy, or excuse me, Councillor Hunter, I think you have that one. Group of myself, second by Deputy Mayor Disham, the maneuver be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to adopt a meeting recording policy, and this shall constitute first and second reading thereof. Okay, so the intent of this bylaw is to amend those the list of meetings that will be recorded and broadcast by adding the Community Development Committee meeting. So, are there any discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. Uh, the motion is carried, and it's carried unanimously. So the bylaw can proceed to third reading. Councillor Hunter. Move by myself, second by Deputy Mayor Deschamps, that a bylaw to adopt a meeting recording policy be now read a third time and finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 2020-56. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Trying to hang on to okay. it. So this is third reading of that bylaw. Those in favor? Aye. The, meeting, the motion is carried, so the schedule becomes amended. All right, now bylaw 11B, which is the bylaw that deals with the issuance of marriage licenses. Councillor Cameron. Yes, thank you. It's uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Hunter that the mover be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to appoint the clerk as a person authorized to issue marriage licenses, and this shall constitute the first and second reading thereof. Okay. Uh, so, discussion if any? Uh, hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. All right, the motion is carried unanimously. And you may proceed then to third reading. Thank you again, and it's moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Hunter that a bylaw to appoint the clerk as a person authorized to issue marriage licenses be now read a third time and finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 2020-57. 2020-57. Okay, discussion if any, hearing none, those in favor? Aye. The motion is carried. 
Saul, the clerk becomes the appointed person. And now I'm going to 11C, which is a bylaw concerning the provision of civil marriage services, Councillor Cameron. Yes, thank you. It's moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Hunter that the mover be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to authorize the clerk and deputy clerk to provide civil marriage services, and this shall constitute first and second reading thereof. All right, and discussion if any? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Receives unanimous approval, proceeds to third reading. Yes, thank you again. It's moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Hunter that a bylaw to authorize the clerk and deputy clerk to provide civil marriage services be now read a third time and finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 2020-58. Thank you very much. Third reading. Those in favor? Aye. The motion is carried so that bylaw comes into force and effect. All right, and now the next bylaw concerns the rates and fees for marriage licenses. Councillor Dilva. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Cameron that the mover be granted leave to introduce bylaw to amend the bylaw 2016-27, being the bylaw to establish the rates, fees for various services performed by the municipality. This shall constitute first, second reading thereof. And if I recall correctly, the only change that this makes is a change to Schedule A, where the fee goes from 100 to 115. Okay, and uh, those in favor of first and second reading? Aye. So all that gets unanimous approval. You can proceed to third reading, Councillor. Moved by myself, second by Council Cameron, that the bylaw of amendment bylaw 2016-27 be a bylaw to establish the rates, fees for various services performed by the municipality. Now read a third time, finally passed, signed, sealed, number 2020-59. And those in favor of third reading? Aye. And the motion is carried. All right, now I'm on bylaw number 11E, which is concerning the credit card policy. And um, uh, it's Councillor Dillabaugh again. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself, second by Council Cameron, that the mover be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to amend the bylaw 2020-19, being the bylaw to adopt credit card policy and shall constitute first, second reading thereof. Okay, and basically what we're doing here is adding uh, the operations manager of the Port of Johnstown and the office manager of the Port of Johnstown as uh, individuals who will be authorized to carry a township credit card with a limit of $3,500. So, discussion, if any? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried unanimously, and you can proceed to third reading, Councillor. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Cameron that the bylaw to amend bylaw 2020-19 be a bylaw to adopt a credit card policy. We now read a third time. Finally passed. I sealed the number 2020 60 very much. Third reading on that bylaw. Those in favor? Aye. The motion is carried. And that bylaw shall come into force. In fact, those two folks can get a credit card. And uh, now we're moving to 11F, which is a bylaw to amend the 2020 tax rate bylaw. And uh, Councillor Hunter, I believe you have that one. Move myself, second by Deputy Mayor Dishop, that the mover be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to amend bylaw 2020 16, being a bylaw to provide for the adoption of tax rates and to provide for penalty and interest in default of payment thereof for 2020. And this shall constitute first and second reading thereof. Thank you very 
much. And if I recall correctly, the purpose of this bylaw is to introduce a new class called IZ and uh, uh, results from a, 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 a taxpayer who had requested reconsideration and uh, AMPAC granted the reconsideration and introduced this new tax class. We have to amend our bylaw to accommodate that decision. So, uh, voting on first and second reading. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried unanimously and we can proceed to third reading, Councillor. Move myself, second my deputy, Mayor Deschamps, that a bylaw to amend bylaw 2020 16, being a bylaw to provide for the adoption of tax rates and to provide for penalty and interest and default of payment thereof for 2020, be now read a third and finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 2020 61. All right, um, on third reading, those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Uh, bylaw can come into force and effect. And now I'm going to uh, 11G, which is a zoning bylaw amendment for 1019 Hindman Road. Deputy Mayor Dana. <coughs> Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter, that the mover be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to amend bylaw 2012-35 as amended. 1019 Hyman Road dash pinfold, and this shall constitute first and second reading thereof. Very good, very good. And if I think, if I recall correctly, this will be the first time that we've authorized a second dwelling on a property uh, with a number of standards. Uh, and the bylaw, those standards are incorporated in this bylaw. Discussion, if any? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried unanimously, and you can proceed to third yeah. reading. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter, that a bylaw to amend bylaw 2012-35 is amended, 1019 Hyman Road, Pinfold, be now read a third time and finally passed. Signed, sealed, and number 2020-62. Very good, very good. Third reading, those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried, and that bylaw comes into force and effect, but I believe there's a 21-day appeal period. Is that your issue? It's not <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, you've got us over the hump. <laughs> this is the first time this has happened. All right, so now I'm at item number 12 on the agenda, which is the CAO's administrative update. And Councillor Cameron, I'll let you bring the motion forward. Thank you again. Uh, it's moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Hunter. The Municipal Council receives the CAO's administrative report as presented. All right, well, then we let the CAO present his report. So, Mr. CAO, if you'd like to highlight your report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just wanted to let, uh, let Council know that uh, we have uh, eScribe contributor training for, for SNT uh, this, this Wednesday. Uh, in respect to economic development, Justin St. Pierre has been, uh, been hired, and uh, once he completes his uh, training program, he'll be soon reaching out uh, to support local Main Street businesses in Augusta, Prescott, and Edwardsburg Cardinal. Joint Health and Safety Committee has, uh, has met and reviewed the health and safety policy and procedures, and will bring forward the, the updated document at the uh, November Public Works Environmental Services and Facilities meeting. Quick update on the website design. We've had uh, two meetings with uh, eSolutions and uh, we're making solid progress on having the new website live uh, in January. Uh, tomorrow's meeting is to review uh, site mapping. Under uh, the building department, 148 uh, building permits <coughs> issued uh, thus far in 2020. And a reminder of the public meeting uh, scheduled to review uh, fees on November 9th. 4 p.m. Under uh, Treasury, just uh, under Utility Building uh, Module, uh, staff is looking to migrate the Spencerville Wastewater Building uh, to the Accounts Receivable Module for 2021, creating some efficiencies by saving about, uh, about $630 a year. So what we'll do with fourth quarter billing is residents will, uh, will receive a sample of the new style of invoice so that they're aware of it uh, come first quarter uh, 2021. 
your facilities uh, recreation. Just to let you know that the the docks will are, are planning to be removed uh, this Wednesday, uh, the 28th. Under operations, public works, uh, winter maintenance and prep. Three uh, trucks are ready for winter maintenance activities. And uh, there's uh, 2,100 tons of uh, salt sand mixture uh, in the in the Pittston Dome. With respect to the uh, new vehicles, uh, delivery on those are expected uh, early to mid-November. Operations Environmental Services, uh, Snyder Electric is in this this week and uh, have, uh, have started the upgrade at the uh, at, at the plant with respect to moving from Windows 7 to Windows 10, and also uh, the, the the full SCAD upgrades at the uh, wastewater treatment plant. Uh, thus far, from today's report, uh, things are progressing well. Just with respect to the distribution system, uh, flushing of the water mains have been completed in both Cardinal and the industrial park systems. And uh, Prescott Wastewater Treatment Plant Board meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, October 28th at 5 p.m. Now we will meet here if anybody wants to monitor the meeting. Okay, thank you. Fire Department, uh, just under Human Resources, a successful information session was hosted on October 15th with 12 people in attendance. With respect to fleet, uh, the annual pump testing was completed at the Port of Johnstown on October 14th with uh, all uh, uh, Prescott, Augusta, and their sort of cardinal uh, pumping apparatus uh, tested. Under fire prevention, uh, six crews uh, were out during fire prevention week at various locations uh, distributing fire prevention material and collecting for MD Canada. Uh, under emergency uh, management, just uh, let you know that we provided a letter of support to South Nation to include in their submission to the Climate Action Awareness Fund for the before and after the flood, flood readiness communities and resilient shorelines project. Um, if, if, if the funding application is successful, there is no obligation for the landowner or municipality to participate, but it will be available um, if, you know, if it's successful if successful. And also it looks like the South Edwardsburg Community Center uh, will, uh, will suit the uh, paramedic, uh, the community paramedic program and will serve as a, uh, a mobile test site uh, later this fall. Okay, we have questions from the CAO. And um, we'll start at that end of the council table and go around this way. Councilor I'm good, thank you. Yes, I just have one, Mr. Mayor, and it's under, uh, it's on page, um, page 97 of 101, and it's under docks, uh, facilities, recreation, and I'm just curious, how are we going to get the docks to, from the waterfront up to the Pittston Garage? Will that be done also? Second question, will that be done in-house or with someone else? Uh, th thank you. Uh, th it will. Uh, the, the plan is in-house via trailer. Do we have a trailer large there, enough for? There, it? There, there is a trailer large enough for the dog. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's all I have. And I'll leave myself to last, Deputy Mayor. Uh, mine's more a comment than anything else. Just uh, compliments to the fire department for the fire to print the fire prevention uh, material that they put out. They did a wonderful job on their social media as well as the placement of uh, the banners and other materials that they put out. So well done. Well done to them. We'll pass that on. And Councillor Hunter. I just have one under the facility and recreation. We replaced the hot water tanks at the north end of the, of the Spencerville Arena. I see their rental units. Uh, how long of a rental agreement, I wonder, do we have on these? If, uh, if I know they're electric and we've got lucky enough to get natural gas coming in, in here. I think we'd want to change them over to gas heaters, not electric heaters, and probably own them rather than rent them. Uh, so through, through, through the mayor, I, 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 don't, I, I, don't, I don't know the, uh, the, uh, the, the term 
right now, but I'll, 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 I'll follow up and, and, and let you know. Yeah, is there a minimum term, I wonder? I don't know what the term is, but I've never seen it profitable to rent them, so. Yeah. Okay. You um, buy them, they're electric. Your garden? Usually, well, at least in the residential end, it's cheaper to buy uh, an electric uh, water heater uh, than it is to actually, well, it's always cheaper to buy. But uh, compared to gas, the electric is that much cheaper when you purchase it. But the rates will certainly, Councillor Hunter is absolutely correct. If we get natural gas, that's the way it should be. Um, but um, I, I, I know I'm familiar with a residential, and it was, uh, I believe it was five years. But remember, with rental, if anything goes wrong, the rental people are responsible and they come in and make it right. Do we, do we know who the rental company is here? Is it Reliant or do we know? I think it's Reliant. I, I, I'm not 100% I'm not sure. I, I, I will follow up. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions here? Uh, now, uh, so I have a couple of questions. So now on page 96 of 101, uh, I was, as you know, really interested in this vacant and abandoned buildings bylaw, and I see we've sent six additional letters were issued to owners related to vacant and abandoned buildings. I'm going to say something in my report about that, uh, but my question is, uh, that now makes a total of 10, uh, 10 plus 6, 16 that have been identified, but we know from the first round of 10 that there was a number, at least two, that there hadn't been any follow-up for. So can you tell me uh, how, how much time has passed since these six additional letters were issued, and has there been sufficient time, maybe not, for follow-up? Uh, Mr. Mayor, the, those were just uh, sent last week. Okay, so, we'll follow up with them in a couple of weeks. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to just mention, uh, the fire department did their testing at the port of Johnstown, and my understanding is that these pumps are tested by a third party. Is that the way it works? That, that, that is correct. So then the third party just appears in one location and tests everybody's vehicles. Correct. And my understanding from the uh, plant, uh, from the port general manager, is that it uh, seemed to be a fairly successful operation. Yes. Um, so I just want to thank you for that. Great to see them working together, uh, the three municipalities, to try to bring that um, synergies of, of service. Uh, so now I see on uh, operations public works. We've commenced the fall grading of the granular roads, brush removal for sight lines, various roads and sidewalks. And uh, just a shame, here we are in fall, we do the, try to do the granular roads one last time before snowfall, but it looks like the rain is going to continue to bring us a series of potholes. So, uh, uh, Unfortunately. Yeah. So what is our intention there? Do we keep trying to go over uh, those roads to, to kind of leave them winter ready? Uh, after rain events like this? Uh, cer cer certainly attempt to uh, while we can. Okay, so what, I mean, uh, we have a fair amount of time even after snow flies, I think, before we get frost in to, to make them in, uh, hard to work the, the surfaces, do we not? Uh, there, 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 there is some time in between first snowfall before, before frost sets in, typically. Okay, and uh, now I just wanted to go for a brief minute to 99 on uh, page 101, uh, where you're talking about the letter of support to South Nations to include in their submission for Climate Action Awareness Fund. Uh, what uh, is the what is the basic intent of that project? Is it mitigation after the damage that was done in 2019? Or is it hardening of the shoreline in preparation for something may happen in the future? What is the intention of that project? So, uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I think it would be a combination of both. If, uh, you know, uh, uh, ma making improvements to become more resilient, but also probably eligible for those that, uh, 
that that had some issues in 2017 and 2019. Okay, so is the application, is that to the federal government? Is that a federal project? Uh, I, federal be I, I, I believe it is a federal program. Okay, thank you. Do we know, or do you know, from your discussions with uh, CAO of uh, Augusta and uh, Prescott, do we know if they're part of that application? Did they also provide letters, or do you know? Um, I, I, I don't believe they did. Uh, Save Nation was just looking for a, a couple letters of, of support, um, and uh, it was a sort of uh, an 11th hour uh, item that uh, I received uh, uh, a message on, on Thursday and end of the day, Thursday, the submission was due so I, uh, I did a, a, a quick uh, a quick support letter uh, and uh, to, just to, to help along because I think it's a, I think it's a great initiative and yeah. uh, certainly uh, uh, I think residents of, of, of the township can benefit. Well thank you very much for exercising uh, your discretion there and, and your initiative in providing them with that support. One thing we know about uh, South Nation is that when they do end up having successful submissions, uh, they do get them out into, uh, into our hands as quickly as they can. So thanks very much for that. Okay, I have, if there are no other questions, Councillor Hart. I just have one thing you brought up the gravel road report. There are a question for you that are saying, you know, on our borderline road, uh, Totem Ranch Road between uh, North Grenville and our, ourselves, who does the gravel? maintenance on that? Who does the snowplow maintenance on that? <laughs> anything, you can, anything you say can or will be used. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm trying to Sorry, I'm, I, so, so there's probably a good 90% chance I, 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 I have this uh, incorrect, but I don't know if my feeling is that we do the summer and North Grimble does the winter. I just, uh, I thought it was the other way around, but. See, there you go. <laughs> so, so, you're, you're, so, you're, so, you're, so you're probably correct. That's why I said there's a 90% uh, chance I'm incorrect. Regardless of who, who does it, uh, I've been getting uh, a lot of who plates off the west side of the road there being so rough and, and bad and I know there's nothing we can do about it because, because uh, uh, I guess you want to call it a fending business is on the north is on North Grenville that handles all the travel containers that he's shipping sell them, resell them drawn in and redrawn out I guess they come in every Wednesday pretty near there's lined up in the road sometime getting in trailers to unload these containers there and then the lads just pretty keeps them out there but they're Are they just told ranch yep. on west on yep. the west side yep. and, yep. and who's bringing the containers well, in well it's a north Grenville resident that's on the north side eh? so he's dealing in them there and, and uh, i've been getting complaints from their heavy trucks and they're waiting and they're turning on the gravel road and they've really got it roughed up and eyed up in a while ago and it is pretty bad shape. It's pretty pretty rough all, all, all right. Uh, uh, it's nothing to our jurisdiction but uh, just well, no, it's not. we need something done to the road. Yeah. So. Well no, but I mean the agreements that we have on those boundary roads uh, where we've where we've uh, split the uh, where we split the maintenance on a winter summer uh, division I mean, if, if we find that, that they are in fact responsible for summer maintenance and it's not being done, then we have, you know, we have every right to notify them and, and contact their, uh, their public works superintendent, and her name is Kathy, and uh, she'll look after that. Oh yeah, uh, I, I, I get that, but I mean as far as the trucks coming and going, they're complaining about all these trucks lining up in the road, that that's North Grenville's problem, it's their business on their side that he's operating a business where he has a license to operate a business 
They're not, I don't know. What's going and coming in these containers? I'm just curious. They're just empty containers. They're shipping containers, empty ones that he's bringing in and offloading there, and then he loads them up and sells them to people. Oh. So, it so sounds like our bylaw is very timely. Well, no, it's not in our township, so. <laughs> so we'll, 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 we'll follow up on the, on the maintenance, and uh, if, uh, if, if necessarily, we'll, we'll contact most people. Uh, thank okay, thank you very much. Uh, so I've still got the motion in front of me to receive the CAO's administrative report. Are there any other questions? Okay, I'm about to call the question on the motion. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Thank you. Okay, so then I'm moving to CAO's administrative update. And the next one is council inquiries or notices of motion. Does anyone have anything to bring forward here? Well, I'm going to just bring something up just very quickly. And uh, I'll, I, I don't know, uh, I'd like to discuss it with council, but I also want to discuss it with staff on our council inquiries or notices of motion. And that concerns the Spencerville well issue. And uh, I was hoping that we would have our consultant's report on the Spencerville well issue uh, in time to have the public meeting, and I did discuss this with council, uh, prior to this meeting. Uh, now, uh, the CAO informed me during the week, that, or last week, that our consultant has completed a draft report, uh, but the Ministry of the Environment wants to make sure that their report that they're doing is in sync with our report, and apparently the health unit is doing a report, and they want to make sure that their report is in sync with our report and the MOE report, and of course the end result is that we didn't hold a public meeting tonight because we're holding up our report. And of course you recall as well that we wanted to have representatives of MOE and the health unit present at the public meeting so that there'd be some opportunity for questions. So now my worry is this. We've got three parties trying to sync a report together, get it in sync, get those reports in sync. But I don't have a date for the public meeting. And my worry is that this will drag and drag and drag and drag. And so I'm going to be asking council to set the date of the public meeting and inform the parties that uh, our consultant will be presenting his, I don't care whether it's a draft report or his final report, our consultant will be presenting the, the report to the public on a certain date. And we hope that you'll be ready to join us. So I think council here has to be the one that breaks this, this log jam. Now the CAO may have more to say, and I would like to have a response from him before I um, I asked council to do that. So, can you give me us? Can you give us an update on where that issue is? Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, the the, the health unit ministry and our, our consultants and, and township staff will be uh, uh, have a meeting scheduled for October 30th, and uh, hopefully, hopefully at that time, we'll be able to uh, to, to to sort of. Um, Finalize a, a, a time when, when when those reports will uh, will, will be um, uh, ready to go to the public, and ho hopefully it will be uh, you know I, I, I would say within about uh, um, three weeks uh, from, from from the October thirtieth uh, meeting. That basically postpones the public meeting by another month. Close to. See, what I'm worried now is that people will start thinking that we're hiding something because we're not being timely here. Uh, timing is everything. And um, I know that coordination takes time. I'd like to hear some more discussion. Anybody else want to weigh in on this topic? Councillor? No, well, I know the people in Spencerville are looking for some answers. Nobody seems to have them. definite answer. There have been all kinds of prepositions put forward of what causes are and aren't and stuff, but we've got three different groups 
looking at uh, this, and I'm like yourself, I, I'd like to see it sooner than later, but I don't think it does, a, does the public any service or us any service by having only one report to come for, forward and they make a assumption of, on theirs and the other two reports come through and, and they're completely opposite. Oh. It, it looks bad. Looks bad. So mm -hmm. I, I, I know it, it's waiting, but I'd sooner wait and be sure that everybody's in, 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 in sync, that we get all the right answers and not just half answers along the way. So. Well, and, and you know, I'm not even sure whether there's going to be answers, but I totally agree that the three reports have to be in sync. They can't be contradicting one another. I understand that. But what, I, what I'm having trouble with is how long does this process take? I mean, considering the fact that this really started in August, you know, that's when this first thing first came up. I think it was August, Friday, August the 14th. So, uh, I just felt that by council kind of say, setting a date, that it would maybe incentivize all three parties. I think our party, our staff, and our consultants are ready. I, I just feel that we have to incentivize all parties now to to come together and coalesce one way or another and get and get this thing out into the public arena. And if, if it takes council's direction to do it, that's what it takes. If, if council is prepared to wait another month, fair enough, I'll, I'll understand that. But, you know, as it drags by, you lose credibility with your public. Mr. Mayor, uh are we having any other issues, or has it died down with other wells, or is it still? Did we know of? Through, 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 through the mayor, I the, the 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 last report that we had heard is that that, that a number of the samples were coming back uh, good. So, are we getting lots of people bringing their samples uh, here? We 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 are we are not getting a lot of people. Submitting their results. Submitting their results. Yes. Yeah. But right. if, if, if you're speaking to the um, uh, service of weekly pickup, uh, it, it has been, uh, uh, well, it's two weeks now. This, I believe, will be our third week. Uh, it, 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 has been, it, it has been pretty good. I, I believe there was around 12 samples picked up the first week and probably somewhere between six or eight uh, uh, last week. And are, and these eighteen will say, for instance, are they? They're not coming back and saying we're good, or because uh, so it goes to the homeowner. It, right? it, it, it goes. It goes to the homeowner. Right. That is correct. Yeah. So, but we're not getting no feedback out of those eighteen. Uh, we're 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 not getting uh, we, we we are not getting much in the way of feedback, uh, other than the, uh, the the weekly pickup seems to be uh, well received within the uh, within the community. Okay, uh, have we done a reach out? Have our consultants or our staff done a reach out to those folks, that, especially in that, I'm going to say, controversial area? Have we done a reach out to those folks, actually knocked on their door and asked them, you know, do you have a recent sample? Would you mind sharing it with us? Have we, do we know that, that the, the, the ones that were deemed undrinkable or deemed not potable do we know that those have been corrected? Uh, cer certainly don't have a guarantee on that particular uh, part at, the, at, at this stage. See, uh, I, I, that's, well, okay, uh, where do you want to leave this? I mean, I, I'm, I'm sort of bringing it forward as a notice of motion here. But what? I don't know when I'll bring it forward, but I'm going to keep, I'll keep in touch with the CAO, and if, I, if I'm not, if I'm not feeling that there's progress being made after October the 30th, do you think it would be possible? Will you be attending that meeting on October the 30th? Uh, that was my intention. Okay, that's Friday, right? It is Friday. Okay, do you think it would be possible to get a commitment from all parties as to a deadline? It would be much better if they would give us a commitment than us trying to force a date. Uh, we, we can certainly attempt to, uh, to, to, to get a commitment. Oh, that's... I know your problem. My worry is we're dealing with a provincial
potential ministry here that's gun shy and may not even want to participate. That's my worry. And they have a way of dragging it and pulling us down with them. I mean, I'm being blunt. Well, uh, in, uh, Mr. Mayor, in, in all, in, like in all uh, fairness, it was the previous meeting that we realized uh, that the ministry was uh, going to be producing a separate report. Um, so we did have the commitment uh, October 30th that draft reports would be there. So um, I, I'm anticipating that the draft report will be, the ministry's draft report will be uh, there on October 30th. And they've seen our draft. Uh, they have seen our draft. And the health unit has seen our draft? Uh, I believe the health unit has seen our draft. And who's representing the health unit? Uh, I'm not sure who will be on the, uh, on the call Friday. Okay, well, that's, uh, you know, I'm just bringing it up, and I'll let it go with that. And uh, let's see where we stand on October the 31st. We do have a 31st, don't we? That's the next day. That's Saturday. I think I would probably update the late in the day on the 30th. <laughs> no. Thanks very much. Well, Mr. Mayor, what happens if, if we're, I mean, we, we're saying the month, and what happens if we're no further ahead of what we are tonight? Well, then we are dragging our, our rear ends. Well, I think what we'll have to do is let the process work through October the 30th. We'll get an update from the CAO on October the 30th or the following Monday. That's a Friday. We may get it on the Monday. And then we do meet on the Monday as a community development committee, but there's only three of us here. But we do meet again on the following Monday, which will be the 9th, as admin finance committee. So I think if it's necessary to uh, be a little heavy-handed, that might be our opportunity. We call a special meeting of council and, and set a date uh, on that following Monday. Uh, that'll be the 9th, I think. Okay, well, let's let the process, let's let the process give it time to work. Sometimes it just takes more time to percolate. Okay, uh, anybody else have anything <coughs> under inquiries or notices of motion? Vote to move on then. And I'm going to move to the mayor's report. And I see that uh, Deputy Mayor Deschamps, you're going to bring the motion forward. Uh, I'll let you bring it forward now if you would, and then we'll deal with it at the end of the report. So moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter, the Municipal Council receives the Mayor's report as presented. Okay, that's the motion will be on the floor. So we have a number of things to talk about. And um, many of these things, I, I, was, I was prepared this report thinking that the press would be here. And some of this stuff I wanted to put out in the public agenda, but a lot of it is going to be um, uh, discussed in the in-camera session which will follow. Uh, so let me just go through a few things. So first of all, with regard to the job site challenge, uh, we've had another discussion, teleconference discussion with Infrastructure Ontario on Monday, October the 19th. That's the CAO and myself and the two folks from Infrastructure Ontario. And I'll report more on that meeting in the in-camera session. Uh, we had a teleconference with Novatech on Thursday, October the 22nd, uh, where we asked Novatech to complete the questionnaire that we received from the debt reduction team. And let me say that uh, in my recent conversation with the, um, with the contact uh, from the debt reduction team and from the minister's office, Minister Sicaria's office, um, they've been through all of the submissions. And they've had a ministerial working group reviewing all of the submissions. Now what they've done is they've sent a report, sent a questionnaire that they're asking all of the applicants to submit. It's a very long and very comprehensive questionnaire. And I think the reason they're doing it that way is because they want everybody to submit, make a, another submission in exactly the same format. In other words, everybody will be answering exactly the same questions, which will make it easier to kind of compare the answers, rather than searching for answers through each submission. I think that's the purpose of it. So we've asked Novatech to do that work for us, and they've agreed to do it for us. 
Now, the last thing that comes into play there is that we know that our, uh, our submission uh, does require some zoning changes. It requires a change to the county official plan, requires a change to the township official plan, and it requires a change to the township zoning bylaw, the existing zoning bylaw. We know that those zoning changes can be um, dealt with by means of a ministerial zoning order. I have already reported to Council that we had asked Novatech at an earlier time to prepare the resolution that's required to get or ask for a ministerial zoning order. They prepared what I call version one. I took version one and I submitted it to the minister's office to get a kind of guidance feedback. Is this the kind of emotion resolution that you want to see? Now, unfortunately, the person in the minister's office that deals with ministerial zoning orders has left the minister's office. But, and I'll speak more to the process when I get into the in-camera session. But suffice it to say that Novatech now has a second draft of the resolution which requests a ministerial zoning order, and that's what we'll be discussing in the in-camera session. So that's job site challenge and I'll have more to report in the in-camera session. Now, uh, Councillor Hunter asked the question about the RBC branch uh, ATM machine. I've answered that. Uh, the Spencerville Well Report, we've had a discussion on that. Uh, I just want to say a little bit about um, our vacant and buildings bylaw. And we brought that vacant and buildings bylaw forward quite some time ago, and the staff has been working on it since then, but prior to that, we were doing quite a bit of work along those lines uh, just with regard to our zoning bylaw. So I just want to report the following. And, and the, it's, they're kind of tied together. 45 Adelaide Street was vacant for about four years. It's now been sold, completely remodeled, and resold to a new owner who has moved in. 61 Adelaide Street was vacant for about two years. It has been sold, completely remodeled, and sold to a new owner, which is in the process of moving in. 718 Benson Street was vacant for quite some period of time. It has been sold, completely re renovated interior, and will soon be placed on the market for sale. That's three new units back on the market. 2224 William Street, Councillor Street, we've had a lot of trouble with that, but that property has now been sold. Uh, the new owner is talking about renovating or possibly selling again. That's a possible two more. I don't need to tell you about 6A and 6B Hoy Street. Those were new builds, both sold before the, com the construction was finished. 7A and 7B Hoy Street, again, were new construction, both sold before construction was finished. 118 Waddell Street, Charlie Burroughs Triplex, uh, my understanding is completely rented prior to construction finished. And now we get to the two that are most uh, the forefront in my mind, which is 4028 and 4030 James Street. 4030 and 40. 4028 and 4030 Jane Street is tied in with the property on New Street. I have, and I've told the CAO this, I'm making it public, uh, I have a buyer that will buy it if we can sever 2020, 4028, 4030 Jane Street from the property on New Street. The CAO is preparing a small little report from me to tell me what would be involved in severing that and making it two properties. So those are just a few of the things that have been happening. I mean, these are all good news stories, and the interesting thing about it is we're putting, we're putting what was once vacant properties back on the market and some new builds. Uh, another item, I did report to council that I was going to meet on uh, November the 20th with um, the people that use the, the brand name The Wellings, the actual corporate uh, name is the, called the Nautilus Land Group. Now from my point of view, 
it was just a, a, a tire kicking expedition. They were just here to kick tires and I don't know that there'll be anything serious coming from it, but I wanted to just bring you up to date on that. And now the last one, I just made you aware of this, that there is developing interest on the 94 lot Charlevoix subdivision, which is on the west side of County Road 22, south of the railroad track. And there's developing interest there, and I expect that we may hear a lot about that subdivision in the next three months. So that's my report. I have the motion here to receive the mayor's report. Are there any questions before I call the question? Hearing none, I'm going to call the question. Those in favor? Aye. The motion is carried. Thank you. Okay, so now uh, we have a question period. There's no one here in the gallery. And I'm at item number 16 on the agenda, which is a closed session. And we will be going into a closed session to deal with a number of issues. And uh, I think, Councillor Hunter, you have the motion to take us into the closed session. Move myself, second by Deputy Mayor Dishout, that the Municipal Council proceed in the closed session at 747 in order to address a matter pertaining to proposed or pending acquisition or disposal of land by the municipality or local board, specifically area job site challenge in minutes of closed session date of September 28, 2020. Okay, those in favor of the motion? Aye. The motion is carried. We'll just have a short break and then we'll be going into the closed session. Mayor Dishon, that the closed meeting of the Municipal Council is now adjourned and the open meeting does now resume at 8.37 p.m. Uh, thank you very much. Those in favor? Aye. Okay, the motion is carried. And uh, coming out of the closed session, uh, we have the approval of the minutes of the meeting of September the 28th. I have it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Moved by myself and seconded by Council Cameron that Mr. Public Council receives and approves the closed session minute September 28th, 2020. Thank you very much. First item out of the closed session. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Those minutes are approved. And reporting further from the closed session, the, uh, the committee met in closed session to discuss the disposition of municipal lands, uh, specifically around the job site challenge and, uh, and the daily proposal. And um, that's the report from the closed session. Now the chair is looking for the confirmatory bylaw. And have the confirmatory bylaw. Councillor Dillabaugh. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Cameron, that the bylaw is to adopt, confirm, and ratify matters dealt with by the resolution be now passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 2020 63. Thank you very much. Those in favor? Mm -hmm. Motion is carried. And then the chair is looking for the motion to adjourn. That's me. <clears throat> Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor John Hunter. The Municipal Council now does adjourn at 8.43 p.m. Thank you very much. Those in favor? Aye. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We're adjourned. Gentlemen and ladies.